Good morning from the great city of Manchester, England. Uh, in a characteristically cloudy but relatively mild uh, day. Uh, my name is Paolo Sandro and I want to first thank uh, the uh, editors of Diritti Comparati for this invitation to uh, uh, present uh, in a very short vlog uh, my recently published book by uh, Heart Publishing. The Making of Constitutional Democracy from Creation to Application of Law. I wanted to do it in a, a significant, very significant place for the themes of the book here in Manchester, which is the uh, recently erected statue of Emmeline Pankhurst, uh, one of the leaders, one of the key figures of the suffragette uh, movement here in England, who died uh, just a few weeks before uh, July uh, 28, 1928, when thanks uh, absolutely to her uh, advocacy and political activism, uh, as well as that of other uh, thousands of women, uh, the British Parliament finally passed the uh, Representation of the People Equal Franchise Act 1928, which extended the franchise to uh, all uh, women above uh, 21 years old. And I think that this place and the memory of, of Emily really chimes in with the themes of the book. The book is about uh, the making of constitutional democracy. And what do I mean by the making of constitutional democracy? Constitutional democracy has been defined, for instance, by Habermas uh, as a uh, contradictory, uh, as a paradoxical union of contradictory principle, uh, principles. Habermas famously asks this question about constitutional democracy, because constitutional democracy, there seems to be two principles at odds. On the one hand, the rule of law, the protection of people's rights, particularly uh, minority rights, of course, but also individual rights. And on the other hand, democracy, the idea of and majoritarian politics, the idea that uh, the majority should prevail. Underlying this contradiction and this tension, there is a, a pretty uh, specific legal theoretical problem, which is the distinction between creation and application of law. What do I mean by that? Um, in our everyday legal practices, being professional practices in law firms, in courtrooms, in classrooms, we routinely, routinely use the terminology, the distinction of creation and application of law. Namely, we say that some bodies, uh, chiefly legislatures, they create the law, and some other bodies, uh, chiefly courts, but not only, they apply said law. The interesting thing, and the reason why I decided to write this book, in what started as a project at the University of Edinburgh for my PhD many years ago. And the reason why I decided to write this book is because once you start reading legal theory, and particularly those authors that have looked at the distinction between creation and application of law, the vast majority of them, they believe that the distinction is actually untenable, or at the very least, they question its uh, feasibility. So they basically say that law it's pretty much a juris generative process and the concept of application of law should be heavily qualified. Um, what is the issue with this position, which again, it's pretty much um, constant in all those authors that rather than assuming the distinction between creation and application of law, have actually looked at it and investigated in their theories. Um, what's the issue with this? If this is the case, if the distinction between creation and application of law is untenable, it means that our democratic practices are pretty much a sham, because the idea of democracy is based on this uh, distinction and to the fact that the norms created by uh, a previous body, as I said, legislature, can be at a later moment applied by law apply organs, courts, but also police, etc., etc. What I'm trying to say is that if application of law doesn't exist, then uh, in what sense do we live in democracies? Uh, both direct and indirect democracies are, of course, covered by my 
uh, argument. Um, indirect uh, democracy, which is the most representative democracy, the most common form of democracy in our uh, age, uh, because basically the idea would be why would we even elect uh, politicians if then they actually don't make the law that is applied by law applying organs, courts, the police and so forth. And direct democracy with the use of referendum. What would be the point of holding a referendum with all the uh, expenditure and costs, political, social, um, economical, that are associated with it, if then the law that is approved through the referendum is not the one that is applied by police courts, uh, civil servants and so forth. So the question is pretty basic and in the book I try to unpack the distinction between creation and application and I defend uh, in what I think is the first extensive uh, defense of such distinction through a number of steps. Uh, I look at the concept of the state and the concept of normative systems. I look at the um, role of legal theory for the theory of constitutional democracy. I then look at the concept of legal discretion, which is a fraught concept in um, uh, legal theory, particularly because uh, it is a concept that is also shared by public law, constitutional law, administrative law, but the two scholarships have rarely talked to each other, and that's what I do in chapter four of the book. I look at legal realism, because legal realism is one of the key theories that uh, basically uh, rejects the distinction between creation and application of law, or at least calls for the heavy, heavy uh, qualification of the concept of application. Um, I then uh, necessarily look at the relationship between law and language, because uh, defining and explaining what application of law means and entails necessarily involves a consideration of the relationship between law and language. Uh, and finally, I, after uh, putting forward my distinction, my uh, attempt at providing a stable foundation to the distinction between creation and application of law, between the activities of creation and application of law, I uh, offer one first uh, application of my theory, which is uh, the theory of the separation of powers, the doctrine of the separation of power. So uh, in the last chapter of the book, I offer how uh, my theory uh, can uh, uh, explain and uh, possibly provide a new beginning for the doctrine of uh, the separation of powers. So this is in a nutshell uh, the uh, content and uh, main uh, uh, subject of my book. Here it is again, published by Hart in January 2022. Thanks again to the editors of Diretti Comparati and I look forward to seeing you hopefully uh, at some point in the future. Thank you, take care, bye bye.